Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 41. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. Alright T.O. It's time for the Class F Euro Tour. We're in Europe. Uh, and we're taking the VW Corrado as voted by Twitch chat. So uh, if you want to vote on any of these, feel free to join the stream because we'll be doing a lot more voting on cars for the foreseeable future for these events um but yeah class f euro tour we're taking the vw starting off with circuit de catalonia national circuit silverstone international amalfi coast club circuit from mugello autodromo internazionale and then camino via de montserrat full circuit reverse let's go this song is very much at home with this series because they used it pretty much to advertise the shit out of Motorsport 4. We're going to be back in this car for the uh, Horizon franchise when it comes to playing um, Horizon. Oh my god, my control is vibrating like crazy. Makeshift vibrator, get into a Corrado and start driving. Hey. Get out the way. There's a moose loose about this hoose. Aw. Oh. Hey. Bop. All that power. Clock's ticking. I just count the hours. This thing is not too bad, actually. The only thing I will say is that second gear is ridiculously short. Going from like 25, 30 miles an hour to fucking 70. Sorry, short? I mean long. It's way too long. Go, 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 move, move, move. Do you know one thing I don't understand about those lines? Like the grid lines? They're all wonky. They're not in a straight line. That's really pissed me off. Move! <laughs> Cow screams when you're in its way. 
Move! Haha, <laughs> such a funny joke. Said I'd throw myself away. They're just photos after all. Move. <laughs> Very funny, isn't it? Isn't it, mate? He's fucking hilarious, lad. He's a fucking joker. Go, go, go. Oh, my finger slipped off the thumbstick then. I don't know why the Corrado is so slow in this game, but in Horizon 1 it was actually, it actually had some form of pace. I think it was C-Class, wasn't it? Unless the Corrado that they started with in Horizon was actually like an upgraded car. It wasn't actually stock. But I'll be totally honest, I didn't buy another one to try. The Horizon games are going to be interesting in this series, to be perfectly honest. Oh, so, um... I've got a new schedule, by the way, chat. Uh, and I'm planning on Thursdays to do, like, a nice thing. Obviously, we'll only have one more Thursday stream before I go away. But, obviously, when we come back, we'll be doing it. Um, so, for the first half of the stream is Try It Thursday. Where I try a new game. Um, or maybe a couple of streams I'll try a game, see if I like it, and then move it to the main stuff. Uh, and then the second part is going to be Throwback Thursday. So it's going to be any game that's over 10 years old, basically. Which is pretty cool. Uh, we've now got a 40% discount on Intake Manifold and Throttle Body Upgrades by Volkswagen. Nice. Yo, anyone in chat want to send me a Steam Deck? <laughs> I need a Steam Deck. Now, I really want to, um... At some point... Hopefully for... Christmas time, some point... That I can buy a Steam Deck. Because... The idea of just playing games... On a handheld. Just wherever. Is a brilliant idea. All I can do is send you some deck pick. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I've gone wide. It's all your fault. Hands, it's all your fault. Everyone keeps looking at my dick. I can't do an Aussie accent. That video is brilliant. With deck sealant. <laughs> dick. Dick. <laughs> Oh, 
yes. But yeah, I really want to, um... I would have liked to have gotten one before going on my break, but not quite lucky enough. But yeah, being able to play like full titled games, obviously for me it would be like my rally and stuff and everything, but nobody has made a game for mobile that's like of significant quality to a rally game. Nobody has made one. Not even... I mean, if you were to try and port WRC 5 to mobile, I think most mobile phones would be able to play WRC 5 nowadays quite easily. With no problems. And it'd be a better rally game than a majority of the shit that you get on the App Store at the moment. And obviously, I'm proper into, like, rallying at the moment. I love my rally games, and I just want to be able to play some rally games on the go. And to be honest, when it comes to mobile racing games, there's like two racing games that I think is of worthy quality to be classed as a racing game, and that's Real Racing 3. But the problem is... Yeah, exactly. I was about to say that, Hans. <laughs> Cheers for stealing my point of subject. Real Racing is a really, really solid game. It's got a good variety of shit. But the problem with it is the fact that it's so based around microtransactions now. It's not an enjoyable game on its own anymore. So that leaves you with Grid Autosport, which is... I'll be quite honest. The best racing game on the store. Granted, there's a free option. You can try it out. And if you like that, I recommend paying the full price for all the content. But you can buy the content that you want if you use the custom edition. I just bought the full thing because I was like, fuck it, why not? When I'm going on holiday, I like it. And it's the best game there is on mobile. 60 FPS quite easily. It's very nice. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. You're not wrong. But yeah, there's no... On mobile, there are zero good racing game, uh, rally games. Car Wreck Rally? Shit. Rush Rally? Shit. Rush Rally Origins, which is a slightly different version? Shit. They're all crap. But the thing is, if if Grid, if Codemasters can work with a third-party company to make Grid a playable game on mobile, and that it works, why can't they get a company to work with them to get Dirt 4 or something like that? Yeah, so you can get a PSP emulator and run Gran Turismo. I, actually, I've got to set that up, and I? Or your other option is to play something like WRC Rally, the old school PSP version. But that game wasn't great, to be honest. So, there literally is absolutely no rally games out there for a mobile device. So, when you think, obviously, the idea of a Steam Deck means you can run... As long as you set your resolution at the right thing, um, you could play WRC. I can guarantee you, with the right quality settings, you can get WRC 8, WRC 9, whatever, to run at 60 FPS. No questions asked. And the Steam Deck, granted it will probably be maxing out the Steam Deck. WRC 10 is a different story. That's really poorly optimized. No point bothering with that for the Steam Deck. But yeah, I love... Love my rallying games. Granted, I wouldn't play Dirt Rally. 
on a Steam Deck, because on controller it's still a bit of a pain in the butt. Oh, do you want to know? Something I want to know. Can you get a steering wheel to work on the Steam Deck? How cool would that be if you could, like, dock the Steam Deck and have, like, a portable racing simulator? How awesome would that be? Get that Xbox wireless racing wheel as well. Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, someone tell me someone's done that. That'd be epic. We got 11 grand. Not bad. I'll take it. We got 40% discount on oil and cooling upgrades by our Germany. <laughs> yeah, I breathed something in. It was horrible. All right, here we go. Amalfi Coast. Woohoo. Baby. The Xbox wireless controller was actually perfectly optimized for uh, Motorsport 4. I had one. I don't know where it's gone. But it was the coolest thing ever, honestly. Show me the ropes, I know second to none. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. But yeah, like, being able to... I don't know. Obviously, that Iron Neo Air has recently been released, but that thing gets extremely hot, apparently. It gets about 55 degrees Celsius on the back cover, which is warmer than you would like it. And it's got worse performance than the Steam Deck. And it runs Windows 11. Which, again, really bad. Um. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, a racing simulator in the air. How cool would that be? Imagine. Can I be your plus one? Plus, the endless possibilities for a Steam Deck, right? So, the thing is, if ever I'm laying in bed um, and I want to play some video games, typically I'm... I have two choices at the moment because it's not very comfortable to game in this setup while I'm laid in bed. So, I either have to lay with my head at um, that end that you can see behind me but for me to then see the screen, I need my glasses because it's outside of my focus length. Because I'm fairly short-sighted, actually. Like, this is my, pretty much my limit. If I go back here, all of the text on my Twitch chat is now going blurry. So... Ugh. About that distance, stuff starts to go blurry and it's really difficult for me to see. Uh, so, certain text is, becomes impossible to read. So, I'm then stuck with the choice of either buying a TV. I've got to look at getting a TV mounted it on there. Which, I don't even think would solve the problem. Because of the fact it's still outside of my focus range. Or, I have to lay it this side, but then I'm laying on my side. I'm putting all my weight on one arm. Which means my arm then goes dead, and it's just not comfortable. Plus the power, the amount of power it would use. So if you compare that to then using a Steam Deck... ...for a couple of hours at night, instead of... Um, ...the PC. Probably using so much less power. So... People don't complain that I've got my computer on as much. That way as well, if I'm rendering a video, 
I don't have to just sit there and wait for the video to render before I can play any games. I can just load up the Steam Deck, play some stuff off that. So many use cases for it. Like, honestly, even as a non-travel device, the Steam Deck seems really ideal for my setup. Just gotta get one. Gotta buy one. I wanna buy one. Petition to get Mecha Steam Deck. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, in a way. Because I got Forza on Steam, haven't I? So. But as well, I, d I can't remember what the name was. It's something. Is it Xenia? I don't know what it is, but it's basically like an emulator for Windows apps in. Linux, so Linux can understand it, it basically translates all of the Windows instructions into Linux instructions perfectly. And um, I think the chart, the rate of like success is like above 95%. So a large majority of games and like Windows applications do run on the Steam Deck because of this. I think, honestly, if I can have, like, some of my old school WRC games, you get some of the old, like, original grid. Because, obviously, I have CD um, cracked all the... What's it called? So I don't need the CD for my things. So I can then play them on the Steam Deck as well, which is great. All right, here we go. Ah, ah. Woo! Woo! By the looks of it, I'm not even going to get that prototype car that I'm looking for, so we might end up having on Friday to actually do the episode 38. I mean, we're on episode 41 now, and episode 38 still hasn't been recorded. Great. Ever end. I just can't help myself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alone. Get out my way. Move. Go, go, go. I think the only reason the Steam Deck has been so successful is the fact that it is very cheap for what it offers. I mean, I know for a fact Valve are milking that extra price for that etched glass and the 512 gigabyte SSD. Because I, I know for a fact you don't need it at all. Um, I know they're milking that price. And I know they're doing that to get probably some of the money back for selling the lower end one so cheap. But yeah, the lowest end one is like £360, which is a fucking bargain. 
my Oculus when I bought it was 300 quid, and that's now gone up to 400 quid. So a Steam Deck is cheaper than an Oculus headset. And we all thought the Oculus was cheap, but... I mean, you think that Steam Deck's got more tech in it. And it's so much more powerful than an Oculus headset. Obviously, they're not really comparable, because one is basically like a mobile phone, and the other's a computer, but, you know. It's still really awesome to see that Valve priced that so low. Mm -hmm. But being left is hard on this is true. Track coming back. How do I get back? Not when it comes to the quest two. The quest two is Well it depends what kind of VR stuff you're into. If you're into like actual full on like VR, like first person shooters, whatever, then your best bet is probably a more expensive thing like a HTC or a um Valve Index, one of those things. Cause they just have that better immersion factor. But if you're someone who's into sim racing those headsets are a pain in the ass to set up for a sim rig because of the fact that you have base stations and all that stuff. Whereas the Oculus Quest, um, obviously it's now Meta Quest, but the, the Quest 2 is just so simple. You put it on and plug it in and it works. You don't need to set up base stations. Your boundary can just be set to where you're sat. You don't need anything fancy. It's brilliant. It's perfect for sim racers. Honestly, if anyone's looking for like a sim racing VR setup, Oculus Quest all the way. There is no other headset that's just more ideal in terms of practicality. Especially with the Quest 2, I think it's got 2K displays in it, or slightly higher than 2K resolution. It's like 1800p or something like that, per eye. So it's like 1800 by 3600, something like that. It's close to 4K, but not quite. The new PS5 VR, uh, PSVR 2, is going to be 4K. But again, that's limited to just the PS5 system. You have to have a PS5 console to use that VR. So that's why that's not as ideal. Because it's a lot more restrictive. And let's be honest, the PS5 shit is... When it comes to VR quality. I am interested to see what they do for uh, Gran Turismo 7 VR. Seventeen. By the way, chat. Um, I don't know what we're gonna play tomorrow because I've just, I've obviously I realised earlier that um, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 isn't actually ten years old yet. It's ten years old in October. We're in September, so... Technically speaking, I can't play it for Throwback Thursday. So... I need to find another game. But I don't know what. I might do WRC. WRC 1. Um, I'll be honest, PlayStation's quality for PS5, they've turned it up to 11. P 
PS3, PS4. Yeah, I know. It was made in October. That's why I can't use Need for Speed 2012. So that's why I'm going to do something like WRC. But yeah, PS5 quality has been turned up to 11. Big time. Oh yeah, 1146. Got 2009 Mazda 16 Dyson Racing. Please tell me I can use that. Because if I can, I'm going to finish off episode 38. I think this is actually um, applicable. Guy Smith. Yeah, Sony is known for bang for the buck. Um... So, here's the thing, right? PlayStation, one of my controllers does have a tiny amount of stick drift, I will admit. Um, it has a minute amount. Um, when it comes to a racing game, though, most racing games' dead zones are set up that um, it's outside of the stick drift's window. Like, it's so minute. It's like a tiny, like, 1% to the right. That's how little the stick drift is. But for some games where you've got character movement, if you just put your controller down, it will just slowly, very slowly drift to the side. It's nothing substantial, but obviously it's the start of stick drift. Um, I don't see it being a problem until probably a year's time, but by that point, I'm going to swap to that Elite controller that they've re revealed, and that's got removable thumbsticks that you can just swap in and out. As for PlayStation Stick Drift, um, with the amount that I've used these controllers, because when I was on Xbox One, I only used it for my Xbox, and I very rarely went on my Xbox. Now, these PlayStation controllers, they're used for my Xbox, they're used for my PlayStation, they're used for my PC, they're used for everything. And they're barely starting to stick drift. Like, honestly, I think these are a massive improvement over older things like the sticks are l more prone to stick drift prone is prone whether they're more likely or less likely they're less likely to suffer stick drift that's what i mean but at the same time they're not removable and i think it would have been a good idea from the start to make them removable Rather than making the Elite controller just have removable, but at least the Elite controller has removable thumbsticks, I guess. Um, they're nowhere near as bad as Nintendo's. Nintendo's just stick drift instantly, so. And they still have not fixed it. And Xbox is, is just. Xbox. <sighs> Don't let me, don't let me, don't let me down. Losing my mind now. It's in my head. Don't let me down. New, 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 Now, I call your name, but you're not around. PDP. What? <laughs> yeah. I take good care of my controllers, so I've got a fairly um, representative. Representative? No. I got a fairly um unbiased opinion when it comes to like my controllers and such because I, I don't rage at games so I use the controllers as they're intended the Xbox One's more likely to break it's just a much lower quality these ones again if you throw a controller and it breaks that's you being an absolute moron 
because you shouldn't throw shit because you didn't get your own way in a video game. Um, granted, I've thrown a controller once or twice, but even then, no controller that I've ever thrown has broken because I've thrown it. So I'm really curious to see how these people that throw their controller... Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. But I'm on about, like, you know when you see on TikTok, someone throws their controller and, oh, look. Like, the thing's snapped in half or whatever. Like, a button is broken. Like, how fucking hard do you have to throw that to break it like that? And then they go, oh, Xbox quality is shit. No, you fucking yeeted that controller with all your force as if you were trying to murder a small child with it. Yeah, exactly. Or Fortnite kids. Do, 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 do. So, yeah. But, like... The PS5 controller, I know for a fact, is very strong and sturdy. Like, it's got a sturdy feel. Like, whenever I use the Xbox controller, when I... When you get into, like, an intense section, you obviously hold on to your controller a bit tighter. That's just natural for me. But whenever I did that with the Xbox One, it started to creak under, like, me holding it. And I didn't like the creaking feel, because as well as, obviously, the sound of it going, as you creak it. Not too fussed about the sound. The sound is the sound. But obviously, as plastic creaks, it vibrates still. So as you're holding on to it, you just feel the vibrations of the plastic creaking. And it's not a nice vibration. It's not like... It, I mean, the controller vibration in the Xbox is crap anyways. But... Like, it's not like how the PS5 feels, where it's just solid, sturdy, doesn't make a noise, doesn't creak, doesn't move, doesn't nothing. It just works. The vibration is just there so you know, but it doesn't shake the... It doesn't rattle me bones and shake the ass off of your hands or whatever. It's just nice. It's sturdy. That's why I really am a ma massive fan of the PS5 this this generation. Like, I've had two generations of Xbox. Because I went from... Um, I played a bit of PS3. Didn't like it. Went to Xbox 360. And granted, the console was alright. But the quality of the peripherals, like... It was just horrendous. The Xbox 360 quality is terrible. The Xbox One quality is terrible. And the series quality is terrible as well. At least Sony has finally bucked up their ideas and made something more durable this time. I'd be surprised if any of my controllers become completely unusable within the first three years of using them. I'd be surprised. I want to party till my last breath. Till there ain't no air in my lungs there. We got 20, 20 grand there. Not bad. Result. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like. Comment down below and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.